Hey everybody, it's Miss Linda again, and today I have a book for you called The Mystery of Edom Hall. Another very funny story. So we see at the opening page, The Mystery of Edom Hall, Horace and Glenda Pork Fowler have an invitation They live on the, the name of their street is Glutton's Way. After an excellent breakfast, a jolly nice letter arrived from Dr. Hunter, the new owner of Edom Hall. He was inviting Glenda and me for a weekend of free gourmet food. It was to begin that very night, so Glenda had only seven hours to pack. We have just enough time for an afternoon snack before we set off. So... Here they are at their kitchen table. He's reading a newspaper called Hog. They have all kinds of great food on there. They have ham jam, uh, bagels, honey, uh, looks like some cheese. They have quite a meal there. We had a bracing drive up to Edom Hall, though Glenda was slightly spooked by the old road through the woods. She was convinced there were strange noises out there. Silly bird. It was a it was my tummy rumbling. So this is a pretty uh pretty scary looking house there. There's there's them in the car and they're heading up. That's Edom Hall in the dark up at the top of the hill. I must say, it was a bit of a disappointing welcome. With the door wide open and no light, staff, or food anywhere to be seen. We were about to turn tail for home when Glenda spotted a note on the hallway table. So they walk in here. It is looking pretty, pretty, uh, kind of scary. Very dark. And there's a note that's addressed to them, Horace and Glenda. Follower. My dear guests, says the letter, welcome to my home, Edom Hall. Due to the pressures of business, I am unable to join you tonight, but I have designed this house to offer a fully automated dining experience. Your every dietary whim can be satisfied by the push of a button or the flick of a switch. I am delighted to offer you the chance to play a part in the finest dining experience in culinary history and I will meet you personally in the bandstand on Sunday morning for a final mouth-watering surprise. An opportunity such as this can only occur once in any lifetime so until then eat drink and be merry. Your very special friend Dr. A. Hunter. He seemed like a splendid chap after all even if he couldn't spell. One of the words he spelled wrong was the word meat. The word meat, if I meet you, it's M-E-E-T. If I eat some meat, it's M-E-A-T. Kind of mix those up. We went to our rooms to change for dinner. Dr. Hunter seemed to be a bit of a collector as well as a scientist. Glenda was fascinated by the works of art displayed on the walls, but I told her, I prefer my works of art displayed on a plate. Ha, ha, ha. So, we see uh, Red Riding Hood. And it's kind of hard. It's very dark. But there's definitely pictures of what looks like. Dr. Hunter must really be a brain, I remarked at dinner. He laid out a marvelous spread with his jolly clever robot thingamabobs. Odd decor, though. Glenda was not at all impressed, but I thought the portrait over the fireplace was rather good, especially the way the eyes seemed to follow our every move. Proper out art, I say. So this is quite, this is their dinner. And you can see there's robots that are bringing them anything they want. And up there, you can see the eyes in the picture. Again, another wolf. Remember, 
She's a duck and he's a pig. Saturday morning, we had a long breakfast and found a full picnic hamper waiting for us in the hall. We spent the morning exploring the grounds. We spotted the bandstand and a poster advertising a pie fest feast here on Sunday. It was a shame we'd miss it. We'd have departed by then. Yes, it says pie feast this Sunday. Wolf it down. And here they are with their picnic. And it looks like she's all oh, right. She's going to be trying to play some badminton or something. The rest of the day passed in a blur of wonderful nonstop food. We did a bit of exercise and managed to work up a respectable ap appetite for our evening meal. So here they are doing their respectable exercise. He is, looks like he's sunbathing and she's in the pool. And you'll notice this picture. It looks like it's uh, somebody's looking at them through a sight glass, maybe from a gun. We were so full, I didn't even eat dessert. First time ever. And then here you also see, here they are out there. And at the bottom you see somebody is watching them very carefully from a control room somewhere. They're on camera. That night, I thought to close my eyes for a few seconds while Glenda applied her lotions. But I, when I opened them again, the old girl was snoring contentedly beside me. My stomach, however, was far from content. It was grumbling. I decided I'd pop downstairs for a tiny snack. -at. So here she is getting ready for bed. And here he is feeling hungry. It was a long hike to the kitchen. You'd think a clever chap like Dr. Hunter would have put in an elevator. And there were far too many locked doors throughout the place. I was ravenous by the time I found the kitchen. So here he is, walking toward the kitchen. And again, we see a mysterious creature in a control room who seems to be watching them. It was odd that there was no light in the kitchen and no robot helpers either. I had to fend for myself. Dr. Hunter was obviously a keen cook, though. The Capitol Chat kept a very well-stocked fridge. Also, you can see here, the uh, he has some cookbooks called Let's Talk Pork, Fattening Friends, Cook Your Goose, The Book of Bacon, Get Stuffed, etc., etc. I went back to bed eventually with a few midnight treats for Glenda, too. Here he is. Look at, look at all this. That's quite an... Uh, Quite a nighttime snack he's got there. The next day, Sunday, after a leisurely final breakfast, we made our way to the bandstand. I have to say, it was very poorly constructed and swayed most alarmingly as we climbed in. I climbed up, I should say. So if you look very carefully what they're in, it looks like some sort of a cooker. There was a loud crack as we both squeezed inside, and since Dr. Hunter was nowhere to be seen, we thought we really ought to leave before we broke anything else. And here's Dr. Hunter. He was hiding underneath it, but they were they gained so much weight while we were there, they broke his contraption. Although we searched for Dr. Hunter, we couldn't find him and decided to set off. We hoped to get home in time for a late lunch. As we left, a coach full of guests was arriving for the pie feast. Dr. Hunter must have been too busy making arrangements to give us our surprise. Never mind. It's a shame we never got to say goodbye and thank you, of course. I wonder just what sort of pie they had. Well, here's a picture of the pie, but of course it doesn't have the filling it was supposed to have. And here's a picture of the bus called Wolfula's. And here are the guests sitting around the pie. And 
this is the end. I don't think there was much in the pie. Anyway, that's the mystery of Edom Hall. We'll have it in the library for when you can come back into the building someday and you can take a good look at some of these interesting pictures. Take care.